very exciting. <laughs> Years ago, I was having a dream, and in the dream, I was standing in this kitchen, and it was a very homey, warm, country kind of kitchen. There was wooden shelves and little herbs and cooking and spices, and I was feeling cared for and loved. And there was this woman standing in front of me, and she was an older lesbian woman, and she had short white hair, and I was looking into her eyes, and I felt deeply connected, deeply at home, cared for, supported. Mm, everything was just right with the world. There was a back door behind her that looked out over some nature. We walked outside, looked to the left, and there was this big mud bath, like hot, slash hot tub thing with my boyfriend at the time was in the tub with uh, some women. And they were all he healing women. And, and he was getting healed. And I, I remember shouting over, be careful of his back. He had a bad back at the time. That was very mature for me to have that thought in my dream with all these naked women. Um, and, but I was feeling so good. So we go back in the house. And um, I'm standing there. And I'm taking it all in. And I'm looking at her. And all of a sudden, I become aware that this is a dream. And the heartbreak that I felt in that moment was, was so... I, I just looked at her and I said, I said, oh my God, this is a dream. This is a dream. This is my dream. And she looked at me like, well, what are you talking about? I'm like, what? And then, no, no, this is a dream. It's a dream. I'll, I'll prove it to you. I'll prove it to you. And I said, I'll take you back with me. So I put my hand on her left plaid arm shirt. <laughs> I remember it. it was plaid, and I hung on to her, and I said, you know, I'm going to bring you back with me. I'm bringing you back with me. So I pulled her, and, and it was that, that you go through that tunnel when you're trying to not wake up, but you're waking up, and, and then you're trying to wake up, and you can't. So I'm going through this tunnel, and we get to the other side, and I'm like, I'll show you. I'll bring you back. I'll bring you back. I'll bring you back. And I wake up, and, and I honestly was holding a pillow. And, and I remember thinking, wow, that really happens? People wake up holding pillows like in the movies? Because <laughs> I really didn't know that happened. And, 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 then, and then I was thinking, of course, wow, a, a lucid dream was very, very moving to me because I went through such an emotional experience, and I was so heartbroken to find out it was just a dream. So later that day, I was washing dishes in the kitchen, and I heard a voice off to the left of me, behind me, that said, we're still here. And I turned around, and I went, what? <laughs> and I thought, what does that mean? First of all, that's weird. OK, I heard a voice which has happened to me many times, so it's not that weird for me. But I was like, but, but what does it mean? What, does that mean it coexists on another plane? Does it mean it's an alternate universe that's there and there's many alternate universes? Is it the future? I didn't know. I really didn't know. But I'll guarantee you that for many years, I kept looking for those older lesbians in my life that were somehow going to be the, because one, her partner was in the pool with my boyfriend, and, and she was my friend, and I was like, oh, I know I will meet some older mentors, right? And I kept, you know, no, nothing ever happened. Years went by, years, many, many years, and um, I was standing in the kitchen of my acupuncturist, who is also my herbologist, and she is an older lesbian woman with short white hair. And I'm standing in the kitchen, holding on to the carved wooden table, 
looking around at the herbs and the cooking. And the kitchen was a mess, but it was warm and it smelled like cooking food. And I was so bad. I dreamed this years ago. And she said, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just like the dream. <laughs> So it meant more to me than her. But in that moment, I, I thought, OK, there, there are different things in this world that I don't understand, and I'm going to stay open to them. You know, I don't understand this and what it means, but I know there's stuff going on that I just don't know. And I bet there's a lot of other people that are thinking the same thing. A few years later, I was with Zoe. Galvez, who's over there, and we went to see the movie, What the Bleep Do We Know? And, you know, it, it struck me, it inspired me, because here were all these scientists and smart people um, saying things that really resonated with the experiences I had had throughout my life, and some of the theories that I had that I thought were a little nutty. And now I have really important scientists tell me that, you know, we're doing studies, and we've found that this is true, and this is true, and, the quantum physics part of it that I want to focus on, because I don't want to go over, the, the part that, of quantum physics that I want to focus on is that there is a quantum field all around us. And people who were just with Brent, we got into the neuroscience part of this. But there's a quantum, quantum field that's all around us right now. And that we create. This is the theory. We create reality as we go. There's all these different realities going on, coexisting at the same time. And when we, the observer, the observer collapse upon one reality, that becomes true for us. They're saying that thoughts create and even pull into the existence the matter that becomes our reality. That, to me, is really exciting. And <laughs> for many years, just that was good enough. I was like, ooh, that's cool. OK, let's see. What can we do with it? Um, recently, this last year, Rebecca told you that um, she made me do this. Rebecca has made me do almost every important thing I've done in my life. <laughs> for some reason, she's, that's why. Quantumly, she is in my life for some reason. And it's true. It's very true. She said to me backstage, um, why don't you share what you're doing? You know, I'm like, well, oh no, I couldn't do that. She was like, eh, you know, I'll get to that later because I want to stick to the topic. But so, if this is true, if quantum, if the quantum field is there, and then the observer collapse, we collapse upon one reality for ourselves. That means if we change our mind, if we change our perspective, then we should be able to change our reality. Period. If we can create moment to moment and change our mind, change our perspective, then we can change, should be able to change our reality. So boom, 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 got it. How do I combine this with improv? I'm going to teach a, a class called Your Brain on Improv, on improv, Your Brain on Improv. And um, I taught it two sessions of it in Berkeley Rep. And the thing that we bumped up against was people have, we talked about this already, people have great intentions. Yes, I see this, I see this new reality. I'm going to get there. What do we bump up against? Um, the 95% of our behavior that is our subconscious. Learned behavior from our experiences, our memories, the story we, stories we tell ourselves every day. And so the difficulty is you have many good intentions about how you want to move into the future and how do you, you want to change things and how you want your life to be different and, and, and how do you get there and you bump a, up against your own behavioral neural net. So we talked at Brent's, he was talking about the connections in our brain and that what I have read about and what I've come up with is what needs to happen is we identify the change we want to make, the neural net connection of the thing that we don't want, we have to let that die off, just die off, and then we have to create new pathways, 
new neural pathways. And uh, so <laughs> what better tools to do that than improvisation? And so we started having real success when we started creating games around how do we interrupt the connection and allow for something different to happen. Brent, if you were in his workshop, talked about uh, repetition. I'm going to, after I brush this bug away, I'm going to talk about that just for a moment because we run off of instincts in improvisation a lot. And if our instincts are telling us that something feels bad, then sometimes we think we shouldn't do it. But when we're talking about behavioral change, it's going to feel not good sometimes. So this came up in our class. It doesn't mean that it's not good for us if it feels not good. So there's the repetition of practicing the new behavior which doesn't feel right, which feels wrong until it feels right in an atmosphere that's playful and buoyant and safe. <sighs> So, um, we can, I, I, I'm interested in dreaming, of course, because I had that dream. And also, there's a lot of you know, I know, there's so many experts, and I've listened so much up to this point of everyone, yes, that's true, yes, I love it, you know, because it resonates with us. We're all on this journey together. I believe we're all on this tra trajectory. Um, a lot of you know that the, the lucid dreaming training that goes on to teach children to be able to fight their monsters and their nightmares. And I was loving what Gary was talking about yesterday. And, and I thought, you know, one of the ways they train lucid dreaming is to say throughout the day, am I dreaming? 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 You know? <laughs> Thank you. Um, and <laughs> And then when you're dreaming, you'll be sleeping and you'll be having a dream and you'll ask the question, am I dreaming? And you will say, yes, I'm dreaming. Woohoo! I can fly. Yeah. And so you have choices and the children who figure out they're dreaming, they can pull out a magic sword and fight the monster or uh, join the monster to kill other people. I don't know. But just have a good time. Um, so I thought, what if we turn that around? Because one of the problems is, is when we get in our heads and go through life, I had a, I had a, oh, this guy, he was my mentor, he died, but he, um, he was a hypnotherapist, but he, he called it de-hypnotherapy. Because he said, people don't need to be hypnotized, they need to wake up. So I came up with this um, called lucid living where we, we actually practice waking up. So whenever throughout the day you're having a problem, you're, you're in this behavior mold that you don't like about yourself, you have the opportunity to wake up. So at this point, for, to end this, I would like to do a quick couple things. Uh, first, I would like you to get up um, on your feet and breathe and ask yourself, going around, getting into different positions, maybe looking at a table differently or looking at the ceiling, things you haven't noticed yet, and say to yourself, am I awake? Over and over again, in different positions, you might look under a chair, lie on the floor, look at someone's butt, look out the window, it doesn't matter, say, am I awake? Over and over. Say it with excitement. Am I awake? <laughs> thank you. All right, you guys, thank you. Sit down. I'm going to end with one more thing. I have one more minute, which is exactly enough time. Um, I don't know if this is possible, but I'm going to try it. I would like to get everyone breathing in sync with me and give you a little bit of a, a little bit of a perspective shift, maybe. So breathe in, ah, breathe out. Oh, it's good. Sound is helpful to everyone. Breathe in, breathe out. Don't hyperventilate, make it nice and easy. Close your eyes, breathe in. 
Now, as you keep breathing, keep breathing, I'm going to talk. Imagine that everything in this room, the space that is not you and not the people, but it's the space around us, when you breathe in, that is breathing into you. And when you breathe out, that space is breathing in. See if you can get in sync with that vision, with that perspective. Space is breathing. Now this is the last thing I want to say is we are all already doing this. In fact, we've already done it. Quantumly, we have already done it. And I have felt that with you guys, this trip. So thank you. We can stop there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, can I say one more quick thing? Yeah. Rebecca, to I'm sorry, you guys, just one more. I'm cheating. I just want to say this one more thing. About a half a year ago, someone asked me, what did I want to do? And I said, I want to get in front of a conference and talk. And they said, what were you talking about? And I said, I have no idea. I just want to do it. And when I signed up for this, I thought it was going to be one of the little workshops. And two days before this session, I found out I was going to be talking in front of the conference. So thank you. Oh.